You cannot really imagine how many times people ask me to create a video about REST API, especially SharePoint REST API. And all the time I was delaying it because I was so much into Microsoft Flow. I guess this is the time to get into it, but you really think I'm going to go to purely SharePoint REST API? Uh, no. Again, I want to go through Flow, but this time I want to show you how you can use and when you should use REST APIs uh, in SharePoint from Microsoft Flow. So let's look into it, and I hope you will enjoy it. Let's start by a quick introduction to REST API. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. I don't know what it means to you, but if you are familiar with the web services, REST is a different style of web service. It's a communication protocol that you can use to call remote APIs. It's mainly used by JavaScript developers, and SharePoint has a rich list of REST APIs. Let's take a look at the SharePoint REST API library in the Microsoft website, and then I will show you how to use it. If you search for the SharePoint REST APIs on any search engine, on the top of the list, you will find complete basic operations using SharePoint REST endpoints. And if you click on it, it's going to show you a complete list of operations. You can scroll down and see every single one of them, or you can click on the list of the items that you have in this article, for example, creating a site with REST. So if I click on it, it shows you a detailed description of how you can you how you can call this API and use it. Or if I want to go for working with lists and libraries or lists and list items, I click on this one and you will see again a good list of items working with the lists by using the rest and working with the list items by using rest. For example, if I click on it, you will see how you can retrieve all the list items, retrieve a specific list item, retrieve items as a stream, blah blah blah. Then I can scroll down and there is a lot more into it. Many of them, you really don't need to use REST API. So to come to the important question, when do we use SharePoint REST APIs? The simple answer to this question is that when you are using Microsoft Flow, you use it only when you have to. So if there are actions inside Flow that will do the job that you want to do, you really don't need to go for the REST API. It's much cleaner to do it and a lot more understandable and maintainable if you do it just by using actions out of the box in Microsoft Flow. Now, there are cases that Flow doesn't give you that. For example, you want to create a site. In that case, if you want to create a site, probably you need to use a REST API if you want to create a site using Flow. So in that case, you have to come to the list of REST APIs and use it. In this video, I want to come to the question that I've been asked so many times by my students. The typical question is that, how can I update one single field in a list item from Flow? If you go through the list item action, you need to provide all the fields that need to be updated, while most of the time we don't even have them. So typically, we read the entire item, get the values, the values that we don't want to change, we need to reassign it, the values that we want to change, we put the new values inside it. Now we want to pick one field and update that very specific field. And I'm going to use that as an example on how to use REST API to do the things inside SharePoint. Everything else is exactly the same thing. So as soon as you can do one, you can do everything else. Still, if you have any questions, put it in the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to answer that. This is the list that I created inside SharePoint. There are a couple of items into it, and I also added a field called count. So my flow should accept ID and the count and come to this list and find item related to this ID and sets the count to the number that I enter from the flow button. Let's see how we do it. I go to flow.microsoft.com, I click on my flows, and as always, I want to create a flow from scratch. So I give it a name, update product count. I select manually trigger a flow and I click on create. And here, as the parameters, the first parameter is going to be number and I call it product ID. And the second parameter, again, it's going to be number and this one is going to be product count. Save. 
And of course, I cannot save it because the flow doesn't have an action yet. So I need to add a new step and update. If I go directly to SharePoint and I select SharePoint and under SharePoint, I look for update and update item is added here, you will see that as soon as I select the SharePoint and the list, which is going to be products, there's a whole set of items that I need to add here to update. So of course I need to provide the ID, so I have to read the item. And after that, I have to specify title, otherwise I cannot even run this flow. And then I can add the other fields to it. This is not what I want to do. I want to have the ID and the count that I'm getting from the button, and I want to go directly to that record and update it. This is something that update cannot do. And for that, I need to use REST API. So I go back to the list of REST API, working with the list items by using REST. Great, let me scroll down. And I guess here I have something called update. Create list item, create list item in a folder, update list item. This is what we need. Right here, it explains the signature of this REST API and I will show you how we can use it. So let me go back to my flow designer. Let me get rid of this one. I click OK, add new step, and I want to go again to SharePoint. Click on SharePoint, and I look for REST. It gives you send an HTTP request to SharePoint. This is exactly what I need. Site address, I pick it up. The method is going to be, oh, what is the method? Let me go back to the REST API definition. And you see the method is post. So I come back here and I set the method to post. The URI is the URI of the method that I want to call. The REST APIs have URL. So if you see, this is the URL that is defined in the signature. The entire site URL and then API, this is where it starts, web, lists, and then you need to use get by title. So we specify the title of the list, and then we need to specify the item so that the entire thing gives us the specific list item from the specific list that we specify. So let me just copy this and go back to my flow. As you can see, it tells you exactly that you need to start the URL from underscore API. So it kind of gives you an idea how to work with it. So the list title that I want to use is going to be products. Let me go back to SharePoint and verify that. This is the title that we have. Then the item ID that I have should come from the button. So if I go to this side, scroll down, you see I have a product ID. I click on it, and this is going to feed the REST API call with the product ID that I need. So far, so good. Now let me go back to the definition and see what else we need. There is authorization that we really don't care about it because the control itself will take care of it. So if I click on this drop down here, you will see that actually I'm using this connection. So authentication and authorization is taken care of by the flow, which makes our life a whole lot easier. Now we need to go back to the headers. If I go back to the headers, you will see there are a few headers that I need to take care of. <clears throat> one of them is if match. I picked the if match as one of the headers that I need to add here. And I pass the value asterisk. The other key that I have here is HTTP, XHTTP method. I pick it up. I come back here. And the X 
and the X HTTP method value is merge. There we go. This is the value that we need. Copy, and I paste it again here. What else? Let's go back here. Accept and content type. So accept, I pick it up. Again, another part of this header. And I pick the value from here. It's going to be application slash JSON. And I pick the entire thing and paste it here. The other parameter that I have is content type. I pick it up. And again, I paste the value for the content type here. Let's get back here and paste it. So far, so good. Now we get to the important part, which is body. Let me go back here. It has a little bit of complexity. This is the body message. Let me just copy it completely, and then I tell you how it works. I copy it, and I bring it here. Okay. There are a couple of things that you need to take care of. First of all, this is the field name. So instead of title, I need to add count. And the value that should go here is going to be the value that I get from trigger. So I go back again here, and I have something called a product count that I feed it to this request body. The other part is the sp.data.test list item. This test is actually the name of that list. The name of that list here is very simple. It's just products. So I can simply use products. Products. And I save it. But if it's a combined name, like two word, three word name, or something like that, usually the name is not as simple. So in that case, use the SharePoint client browser, go to that object, and get the static name of that object, and then just put it right here. In this case, it's very easy because it's just one word. So the internal name and the title are exactly the same thing. So let me just save it and test and see how it works. Let me click on test. I'll perform everything. Save and test. Sign in is successful. Continue. Now, the product ID, I go back inside SharePoint. I want to update product ID 5. So I come back here. I put 5 here. And the count that I want to add is going to be 100. I click on Run Now. Done. Let's see the result. They are both happy. And let's go to SharePoint and see if it is updated. Let me refresh the page. And there we go. Let's do another one. So this time, I will go for product number 8. and I want to set the count to 140. I click on Run Now again. Done. And if I go back here, Refresh, and I have 140. That was all about it. You can use the REST API, but don't overdo it. As I told you, you use it only when you really have to. Uh, there are lots of actions in Microsoft Flow that will do all the jobs that you need to do. There are a few things that those actions will not provide that when you really need those, you go to REST APIs. At the end, I have started another course. I'm not going to tell you the title, but working with the REST API is one of our chapters. Can you guess the course title? Put it in the comment. I'm not going to say yes or no, but we wait and see the course title when it is out. Thank you for watching.